Hello everyone. Welcome to this demonstration of transaction monitoring application based on machine learning. You may have heard about artificial intelligence or machine learning that has been widely used in the area of anti-money laundering. But many of you may not be aware or sure about its capability. Machine learning can be used to drastically reduce number of false positive in transaction monitoring thereby helping to reduce time and effort of any AML analyst. This application is going to prove that. Another thing is that I have put this application in public domain which means that everyone is welcome to try this application for absolutely free. Don't worry about your confidential data this site will not save any kind of data. In addition to this, this is not a very complicated application. You just need to upload your data, select various options and this application will deliver the output in CSV format. So you don't need any prior knowledge on machine learning or any kind of mathematical concept to use this application. It is very intuitive. I will explain the process later in this video. However, you may want to read the instruction by yourself. So just click here. You will be directed to the user manual page. Here in the instruction page, please download this template in which you need to organize your data. You need to read instruction on how to pre-format your data before applying that data into this application. So read this instruction carefully before trying it on your own. I have taken the sample data from this Kaggle website. The name of data set is credit card fraud detection data. I have customized this data to meet the need of this application. I will share the link in the description section below so that you can grab your own copy. Now let's look at the data. Please remember your data should be in this format. You can say that this is a limitation of this application but I think it will meet your requirement. The first column is risk rating. It is the risk grading of accounts in your organization. So you may have risk profile your customer in different categories like high, low, moderate. So you need to put the same information over here. These are parameters in your scenario in rule based transaction monitoring. Let's uh, clarify this with an example. Let's say if you have a scenario that uh, generate alerts if any customer withdraws some money above certain threshold. So the parameter can be cash transaction above that threshold amount. Similarly, you may have scenario to monitoring wire transfer transaction above certain threshold. So we can have a parameter let's say inward swift above 10,000 USD dollars. So we keep all these parameters in column headings. So I have created the data based on these parameters. One key thing that you need to note here is that rule based scenario is just like filtering in Excel. So you are filtering data on the basis of certain parameter. So for every scenario you can generate data. Okay. You can ask your IT department. They can generate that data for you. At the end of this data, the last column you can see here has a str heading. So 
uh, in this column you can see there is uh, in some row there is zero while in some row there is one so zero means that account is not suspicious after our analysis and one means that account is found suspicious so while you are preparing your own data keep this in mind that the last column should have str data in the machine learning context this is known as a training data training data is actually historical data this data is past data where we have already analyzed whether the account is suspicious or not i like to also give you a brief overview of machine learning in simple terms in layman terms machine learning is nothing more than creating a algorithm and training that algorithm on a certain training data set and after training that algorithm will be able to predict on the basis of new data set so in our case we will be creating an algorithm which will be trained on this data set and when we feed new data set the algorithm will be able to predict whether that account is suspicious or not that is the simple concept of machine learning however if you want to learn more about machine learning then we have couple of videos in this channel i will share the link in the description section below so now let's upload the data and uh, click on the save file so you can see the data training data over here pro tip here you cannot use this data directly in your machine learning application if you use this data the result uh, from that machine learning application will be bias so you need to pre process this data or standardize this data so click this button for pre for pre processing that data so we are using a random forest algorithm here so random forest algorithm is a supervised classification machine learning algorithm which is widely used for uh, this kind of scenario where we need to identify some kind of suspicious transaction from the given list of the transaction also it has been used in credit card fraud detection where usually financial institution wants to know which customer is defrauding them like making heavy purchase through credit card but not repaying that amount to the bank if you want to learn more about random forest algorithm as well as other types of machine learning algorithms then you can go to my course at udemy where i will also teach you how to build a machine learning application for transaction monitoring purpose from scratch so now back to the application we click on metrics uh, we'll discuss about this uh, this metric later on in this video and then we click on classify by clicking on classify you are training this random forest algorithm on the given training data set now the algorithm has been trained you can see the accuracy score is 76 percentage which means that capacity of this algorithm to accurately predict whether the account is suspicious or not is only 76 percentage according to standard practice if you are getting 80 to 90 percent accuracy then that is fine okay but you should not try to tune your application more than 90 percent accuracy Uh, because it will uh, result in overfitting of your training data which means that your application will perform well in your training data set meaning it will perform it will predict 
accurately in the given training data set but in the real data set it will perform very poorly so try to aim your accuracy at 80 to 90 percent and in order to do that we can change these parameters so currently we have three parameters of algorithm that we can tune into it so you can see now the accuracy of algorithm has increased by tuning those parameters now let's talk about visualizing results so we have two visualization chart one is features ranking another is correlation matrix let's talk about features ranking first in simple terms features ranking shows which variables are important for predicting str or resulting into str from this chart you can clearly see that the major reason for the account being suspicious is due to the suspicious online transactions now you can deduce two things from this chart first thing is that accounts which are doing lot of online transactions are found to be suspicious so you need to monitor those account which shows high value and frequency of online transaction than other type of transactions second thing we can derive from this chart is that since the most of str accounts are resulted because of online suspicious transaction it may mean that you are not focusing on monitoring of other types of transaction that you don't have a sufficient scenarios for monitoring other types of transaction then it means that you need to create more scenarios regarding other types of transactions another important chart that we have here is correlation matrix now let's plot that to briefly explain you about correlation correlation shows the relationship between two variables whether they are positively or negatively correlated for example sale of ice cream increases during summer time whereas in winter time the sales will decrease so in this case the sale of ice cream variable is positively correlated with temperature so with this chart you can get very valuable insight into how different parameters of strs are correlated with each other for example you can take this parameter cash 610 transaction debit this parameter shows that number of cash transaction withdrawn from a particular account for a certain given period of time you can see that this parameter is positively correlated with mobile internet transaction credit we shows number of transaction deposited in an account from mobile and internet banking also i like to point out that the shade of color shows the degree of correlation more darker the shade of color highly the parameters are correlated to each other coming back to our example now this relationship shows that in many suspicious account what we can see that whenever amount is deposited through mobile and internet medium such amount are withdrawn under threshold amount so in nepal the threshold amount is 10 lakhs this is definitely suspicious so what this means to you now you can create a scenario to monitor these two type of transaction 
which will generate more STRs. Now we have come to the next important part of this video where we are going to use our trend algorithm to predict suspicious transaction on new data set. Now let's upload our new data set and before carrying out any activities in this data set let's look at the data set. Please remember this data set or the new data set should be in the same format as in the template given for the training data set. One important key feature of this data set is that we don't have str column at the end of the data set which we are going to predict using this algorithm. We again need to transform or standardize this data set. Give it some time as it will take some time to analyze this data set. Let's click on the predict and voila you have a CSV file to download. Click this link to download the file and let's open it. You can see these are the str prediction made by the algorithm. Let's copy this column and paste it in our predict data set at the end of the column. This is my favorite part where I will explain you the power of machine learning. In this data set you can see that we have around 1800 accounts. Now let's check how many accounts are predicted as suspicious by this algorithm. We need to filter this data set with the str column having numerical value 1. 1 means that account is found suspicious while 0 means not suspicious. You can see yourself there are only 67 account that have been predicted as a suspicious by this algorithm. So what this means to you as a ML analyst? It means that you need to focus only on those 67 accounts. Yes, there will be false positive, but it is much more better than analyzing every account. It will save you a lot of time and effort. One last tip for those viewers who are interested in developing application like this. This application is built with the Streamlit and if you want to know more about Streamlit or you want to create your own application like this then I have an excellent course in Udemy where I show you how to create a machine learning application using Streamlit. The link for this course is also given in the description section below. Finally, thank you for watching this video. I hope you have found it useful. If you have any comments, suggestions to improve, please let me know. By putting them in the comment section, I will keep on adding additional features in the days to come. Thank you for your time. Namaste.